Warning. The following video contains hunting and shooting that's educational in nature, but may be offensive to some people. Viewer discretion is advised. Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to present Hunting and Outdoor Adventures with Keith Warren. Good boy, good boy. Hey everybody, I'm Keith Warren, and this is my new pup, Jackson. Welcome to Hunting and Outdoor Adventures. Today, I'm leaving Jackson at home because I'm going to Africa and I'll be hunting for one of the most dangerous animals on the planet, the leopard. So don't go away. Hey bud, hey bud. Hunting and Outdoor Adventures with Keith Warren, brought to you by Bushnell Optics, Darton Archery, Game Tracker, Dodge Trucks, and your Texas Dodge Dealers, Evolved Habitats, Federal Ammunition, Game Finder, Herman Survivor's Boots, Harton Crossbows, La Quinta Inn and Suites, Miller Lite and your Texas Miller Beer Distributors, Mossberg Shotguns, Mossy Oak Camouflage, Moultrie Feeders, Savage Arms, Strong Built Deer Stands, Sure Shot Game Calls, United Welding Services, and Wildlife Research Center. This is a program about hunting. Viewer discretion is advised. This week on Hunting and Outdoor Adventures, I'm in Zimbabwe, Africa on my first safari. If you missed last week's show, on day one of this safari, my professional hunter, Thomas Alexander, put me on this record class Cape Buffalo. Keep in mind, folks, that this is the very first day of this safari. You may wonder how I was so lucky getting lined up with an outfitter that could provide such a successful hunt in such a short time. Well, it's by dealing with my friends at Dream Hunts. Dream Hunts is a full service booking agency that lines up hunters worldwide with absolutely the best outfitters in the business. I'll let Guy Harrell with Dream Hunts tell you more. One of the best parts of Dream Hunts is the fact that we have been to the hunt. We have been with the outfitters we have spent time with them. We know the quality of the transportation, the food, the animals that you're gonna to get to see. And we know our outfitter is gonna give you the best hunt possible. And whenever I sit down and think about my good hunts and I categorize it as a dream hunt, then all of those things have been met and that's what we're gonna give you as a dream hunt. The morning before I'd taken my buffalo, my professional hunter and his trackers had put out a leopard bait. Normally, hunters that choose to hunt for leopard take their buffalo first and then use it for leopard bait. But in this case, Tomage had already acquired the bait just to speed up the hunt. Hopefully, it'll get hit by a leopard tonight. The main way of doing it is to do a drag with a piece of meat, you know, a hind quarter of something or a shoulder of an animal that you've shot on the safari, and you use the stomach content as a drag. You do a drag about a mile long, just to pick up, you know, if a cat crosses that, it'll pick that up and follow it to that tree and you hang it up in a tree so you can put it high on a limb somewhere where the leopard can climb up, feel safe, and we'll stay there and eat it. And you try and check them every day um, because, you know, obviously the quicker you can get on there, the, you don't want it feeding for too long, otherwise it loses interest. But you try, and, you, know, you try and get around every day. If you can't get around every day, certainly every second day you need to get there. Once you've got a hit, the quicker you can sit there and get that cat, the better. You can basically keep them feeding for sort of four or five days and after that it gets very difficult because they'll miss a day and they'll come back and they'll generally lose interest in that bite. When we returned to the lodge, I found it hard to sleep. I'd taken my first African animal and now I was hoping for a leopard. Plus, the king of the jungle had come so close to camp, I was nervous. <laughs> One of the one of the really you know exciting sounds to hear at the angle of camp is a lion you know the roar of a lion. There's nothing like it until you've heard it. It's you know it gives you a good chill, you know, a good shiver up your spine, and it's you know it's, it's really a camp sound. You you know you haven't really heard Africa if you haven't heard a lion roar. 
The next morning, Tom had sent his tracker Maxwell to check the bait. It had been hit. I had never dreamed that I'd actually ever go on a leopard hunt, and now it was happening. After the break, we'll tell you how important hunters are to the African people. Stick around. Welcome back to Hunting and Outdoor Adventures and to Zimbabwe, Africa, where I'm learning firsthand how it's hunters who spend their money in this great land that helps keep these people alive. The most important source of revenue to these people is, is hunting, you know, money from hunting. It's foreign currency, uh, it's, it comes, it's a lot of money and it, it's, it keeps them going. They get a lot of food from it, you know, they get a lot of meat. An elephant, you know, has a lot of meat. Any game you shoot goes back to them. And they, without that, they'd be really, really bad off, really have a lot of problems. But people are coming on photographic safaris, they're going to the big parks, they're not really seeing that side of the thing. What they're paying is minimal, it's not, you know, it's not going to cover the park maintenance of those parks. Tom and Jenna's guys really went out of the way to make sure that the odds of me getting a leopard were extremely high. He had over a half a dozen baits placed in likely areas. Now keep in mind, each one of these baits is set specifically for leopard. <laughs> Be careful, Peter. Yeah, I pop Peter, that's all right. You're looking yeah. good. It's important that the baits be hung in an area where the birds can't see them. The bait needs to be hung high enough to keep the hyenas from eating it. In addition, it needs to be hung from a tree that has a greater degree of angle than 45 degrees. That way, a lion can't climb it. It's such a heavy piece of meat, you don't want it too low, else a cat won't. You know, unless it's a 250 pound cat, so I'm gonna lift that up. It was a lot of work hoisting the bait up in the tree, and it's a lot heavier than it looks. Some of these hindquarters weigh as much as 150 pounds. Due to the lack of humidity in this region in Zimbabwe, the meat, believe it or not, does not even spoil when it's hung up as bait. Watching these guys hang these baits was certainly an educational experience. One thing we all need to watch for are the buffalo beans. Buffalo beans is a, is a little brown, brown pod like this, and it's got like golden brown hairs on it. And you know, they start off green. When they dry out completely, that hair that is, it causes an incredible itch. Almost like your poison ivy. The only difference is it doesn't last as long. Fortunately, and if you can, you know, if you just bear with it for half an hour, 45 minutes, it eventually disappears. But it comes up in a real bad rash and it's very, very itchy. And you'll see these guys treated with a lot of respect. Every time someone sees a bunch of that in front of them, they do a wide detour. See that? They just, they just got me. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. And they got me a little bit over on this one right here. Worst thing you're supposed to do is scratch them. So, right? <laughs> right. Don't scratch. That's the reason why we're there. They're wearing long pants. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, we discovered the second morning that one of our baits had been hit. Holy cow, he must have eaten, what, 15, 20 pounds, I'll yeah. bet you. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. What, there's claw marks? Yeah. See it, Keith, you can see where he's crawled up there? See the claw marks there? Yeah. There? Oh, yeah. Another one there. But And a lion could not do that then? No, oh. no, a lion won't get up the street, never. Wow. You see, he's pulled it up. He's obviously sat there. You can see where it's been rubbing there. In fact, you can see the rub on the tree there. Right. He's pulled that thing and he's had it obviously pulled it right on there and held so it. So he on wasn't there. so he wasn't holding it with one one yeah, of Yeah, he probably paws. pulled it out with one end held, one paw and held it there and then eaten. Okay. But it's definitely been on the branch there. Okay. After checking the tracks in the area to see what direction the leopard had come from, Tomage found a spot in the brush about fifty yards away from the bait to place the blind. Oh yeah, this can be nice. The trackers began clearing the vegetation from the area in order to ensure the best shot possible from our blind. Then Tomich decided to lower the bait. He's rehanging the bait because we didn't have a clear shot. That's a perfect spot for a blind over there. But the problem was because of the, the angle, 
there was just, there was too much cover and we'd have to open it up too much in order to get a clean shot at it. And they're not gonna let you take a shot at anything, much less a leopard if you don't have a clean shot. So what they've done is lower it back down, but the hyenas out here are terrible and so are the lions. And what'll happen, Tommy says that if that bait, if the, if the leopard doesn't come back tonight and hit it, odds are the hyenas will finish it off or the lion's gonna come in and finish the thing off. So tonight is our best shot. After the break, we'll sit over the bait for the first time. Welcome back to Hunting and Outdoor Adventures and to Zimbabwe, Africa. On our first night, we were seated in the pop-up blind about 50 yards from the bait. My 458 caliber Model 116 Savage was resting on shooting sticks, pointing to the exact spot Tomage says a leopard should be. Then we waited. waited some more. Wake me up when the cat comes. You better not start snoring. An hour later, I double checked my gun just before darkness fell. Okay, what we've got, we've got the uh, shooting sticks up there and the rifle basically set on the bait because during the daylight it's fine, you know, you can pick the rifle up and you can you know, look where the cat is. But what happens at night, you're sitting there pitch black so you don't actually know where your rifle's pointing. So having it on the, on the bait now helps you, you know, it cuts out a lot of time because as the light comes on, you should be able to see, you know, should see the cat straight away there. We pulled out that night without the leopard hitting the bait to discover that he fed after we left. Did he eat some more? Yeah. Can you see where he? Yeah, he's been down here. You can see he's, he's standing here eating. Last night we sat till 7.30 and then we pulled out. We came back and checked this morning and the cat had been back again. So what we're doing now, we we set to sit, you know, till longer, we'll probably give it till 10, 10.30. Um, we've put an extra bait up there, just in case we don't get him again tonight, there's plenty of food for him, so he'll, won't feel that there's nothing left to come back to the next night. Um, what we've also done here is put a string on the on the bait so of course it's pitch black at night. And the idea is when the cat's feeding on it, the string will move and alert us that he's there. And then we'll put the light on and hopefully smoke him. On the second evening of the hunt, we got back in the blind about 4.30 in the afternoon. About a half hour later, we heard a noise close to the blind. Tomich grabbed his gun and said we must leave the blind immediately, and I could tell he was serious. We moved up the creek bed to higher ground and came 20 yards from a 10,000 pound bull elephant. Tomich said, don't move and be ready to shoot. The reason we left the blind is we had, that elephant was coming right down towards us. He was probably going to come feed on that tree because that blind's so camouflaged, you would have walked straight over it. And basically, we couldn't defend ourselves from inside that blind, and you want to get out of the way because you don't want to have an elephant tramping on you. All right, come on. All right. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Put that thing back on safety. Let's go get the leopard blind. That's awesome. You know, elephants will often mock charge, and it's you know it's it's a big thing to decide whether it's a mock charge or a real charge. 99% of the time it is a mock charge, and basically if you shout or you just make a noise and let them know that you're there, they're gonna turn and run away. I can honestly say that I've never been so scared. The animals here can and will kill you. I'm blown away. <laughs> After settling back in the blind, I was a bit on edge as darkness started to fall and Tom had said, it's Leopard 30. And we'll stay here tonight 
till we get this cat. Now we've placed a microphone next to the bait so you can hear exactly what's about to happen. After the break, you'll hear what a leopard sounds like as he's eating. Stick around. Welcome back to our leopard hunting special from Zimbabwe, Africa, where I learned that meat of any kind is cherished by the natives. Yeah, they, because there's no refrigeration, you know, they've got no electricity, their only way of storing it, well, they either eat as much as they can right then because they don't get meat. And then if they need to store it, they dry it. It's the only way to do it. They cut it up into jerky. They put a bit of salt on and hang it up to dry. If I do shoot a leopard, I know that no part of the animal will go to waste. And I, too, intend to eat it. About 45 minutes after dark, we heard something. Tommy said, get ready. Just listen to the excitement as well as the leopard as he's feeding. When the light went on, I instantly took aim and Tomich okayed the shot. It couldn't have been placed any better. Exercising extreme caution in approaching the beautiful cat, Tomich gave me the okay to get next to the leopard. That is an absolute beautiful cat. Look at the size yeah. of his head. Look at the head. It's a monster. Look at the head on him. And Look how fat he is. Look how much he's eaten in the last two days. Yeah. Look at that. He is an absolutely yeah. beautiful animal. Beautiful. He did exactly what you said yeah, he was going to do. Yeah. He stretched up just yeah. like that. You hit him straight in there. What? The well, it'll come out just somewhere. Oh, I'm, I guarantee it came out. That's a federal premium solid yeah. bullet. I yeah. promise you it went straight through him. And the thing about it is I shot him with a solid bullet, the same thing I shot Cape Buffalo with, and, and he was stretched out to the limit, yeah. just as far and as he could go, and I, and I put it right there the on him. Yeah. And I mean, it's perfect. Perfect, the, perfect. The savage perfect. did it again. Look at that. Folks, this is Savage Model 116 458 rifle, and I have a variable power scope. And it's important to point out, Thomas told me right before dark, turn it down. It's a 1.75 to 5 power Bushnell scope, variable power. And I cranked it down. The reason why is because you don't have a lot of light gathering capabilities when the power is up. So you want to turn it down, and you'll get more light in dark situations. Look at the size of his feet. Look at these claws. I want to show you these new claws. Look at this. Oh, I feel how sharp that is. Cow. That is the thing that does the damage. My goodness. You see what I mean? That is what does the damage. When that thing gets on you, and I mean, look at these. Feel the sharpness of them. Look how they're curled under. Yeah. No wonder he yeah. can climb they're trees. They're like fish hooks. They are unbelievably sharp. They are like fish hooks. Yeah. Look at them. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Incredibly sharp. And the long tail on him. Yeah, he's a beauty. And folks, let's. It, I know it's a male. Oh, oh yeah. It's a bull. <laughs> Look at these teeth, Keith. Check it out. Oh my awesome. goodness! Huh? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, Tomage. Fantastic. Oh, well done. The, the pattern I'm on. I'm gonna blood you with some lip and. Hey, blood me. That is okay, man. <laughs> you can blood me all you want. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done, man. Well done. Oh. Fantastic. Let's get him and clean him up. We'll take some photos yeah. of him now. Good shot. Real good. Perfect, perfect. Before we close out the show, we'd like to point out again that it's the money hunters pay that goes directly to the people of this land and that nothing of the animal is wasted. 